It's just really funny when you're a work at home mom, it seems like you are never really doing anything, but always like super busy doing everything. So I'm just excited to share this best of 2019 video with everyone. The highest honor I received this year was being named to the list of dynamic women for 2019 by Modern Luxury Angelino Magazine. They literally wrote that I was a force for good to be reckoned with, and I just love that. I hope that ends up on my tombstone when I'm dead. <laughs> this year was my first full year out of the classroom, but I just wanted to make sure that I was still engaged in the research on empowerment and education and health. And I think I did a pretty good job. So I came to this research with my own experiences, and that's the prism through which I refract everything. Um, so, um, my objectivity is my objectivity. Your objectivity is your objectivity. It's funny how that works. Another super awesome honor that I received this year was being named a Person of the Month by Sustainable Initiatives and Alliances in Africa. It's a total surprise, but really awesome to be recognized for the work that I do in Africa. I also got some stuff set up for 2020. I'll be jet setting again. I was invited back to Yale and I was invited by the government of Ghana to share my research on empowerment and maternal health. Another great memory for this year was being invited to speak at the Girls Academic Leadership Academy for International Women's Day. On the sports and empowerment front, I gave a talk for NCAA Division III week at Occidental College, and I also gave a virtual talk for the Sport and Society Conference at Ryerson University in Canada. My last speaking engagement of 2019 was a Woman Up conference. You are the superhero you've always been waiting for. This might be good news for some of you, this might be bad news for some of you, I'm just a messenger. <laughs> What's so crazy is just a couple days after giving this talk, I came down with adult chicken pox and I was bedridden and it was absolutely terrible and crazy. A good friend of mine, Jasmine Henderson, was actually part of a group of women who climbed Mount Kilimanjaro to set the Guinness World Record for playing a soccer game at the highest altitude. And she wrote a book about her experience this year and I was honored to be asked to write the foreword for her book as well. I was interviewed by Adriana Costa on her show Local Now about my social you justice are project. Two children. You are the founder of Earth Class Parenting, a former professor, soccer player, yes. soccer star. And she said, I mean, you've really done it all. But today we're talking about race, class, parenting, yep. which is this movement you started. Yes. Tell me about it. So race, class, and parenting is this marketplace of ideas for women of different ethnicities to come together and have conversations about parenting as it relates to certain social identities. There I was also interviewed for the pilot episode of the She Is Extraordinary podcast. This is the second year of the Narte Sports Foundation that I co-founded with my husband, Kofi, and my second year as the acting executive director. It was really exciting that we ended up being mentioned in the LA Times this year. On the fundraising side of things, I executed two fundraiser events this year. The first was a screening of In Search of Greatness, which is an amazing sports documentary that we did at the Playa Vista Cinemark Theater. Of course, we also had our second annual gala, which is always a fun and fabulous event. This year, we honored Ernest Baskerville from the John R. Wooden Award. And my favorite part of the event was that our kids actually introduced us this year. It was super cute. During our experiences participating in sports, we have had a chance to learn about competitiveness and good sportsmanship. We believe that just because children are poor, that does not mean that they should not be able to learn these life skills. That is what inspired the founders of this foundation. On the program side of things for the foundation, we were truly global from helping girls in juvenile hall do ballet here in Los Angeles County to soccer clinics in Jordan to helping kids play water polo in the Philippines to getting used sports equipment to West Africa and helping a special needs soccer player participate in a Guinness World Record setting uh, soccer game in France. We were everywhere. Thank you, Nardi Sports. Yeah! I played in the Women's World Cup, but I've also been coaching youth soccer since I was 16 years old. I was really excited that I got to coach my daughter's club soccer team this year to a state I'm cup so, championship. So, so 
proud of each and every one of you. I saw you guys step up into a new level today. I saw you dig deep. Each one of you raised your game up so much. And as you guys know, I have played some amazing games, had some amazing experiences on international soccer fields, on ESPN. But honest to God, my heart is happier today. Woo! We love you, Coach. Because I Great have job, seen coach. the arc. And I have seen where you started and where you came to. And it's been a lot of skill and a lot of hard work, but mostly it's just your heart. After winning the Cal South State Cup Championship, we were bumped up to the next division in our league. We remained undefeated and we are looking forward to State Cup 2020. I just love these girls. So my schedule is already pretty intense, but it's also really intense plus wanting for Kofi. So he and I uh, were named an Angelino power couple also at the end of last year. And so we carry that title into this year. And he has a really demanding schedule that really involves me. I always joke that I have a really busy schedule trophy wifing for him. He was named a modern man this year and also a Beverly Hills power player. And he just really has a lot of social engagements around his business. He is the National Director of Sports and Entertainment for Compass Realty. He put on an amazing event this year, the Team Summit, which included all of the who's who's for sports, entertainment, and media this year. He listed the largest coastal estate in California and kept up with his athlete and entertainment clients. And we just have a really great time. The best thing about being married is getting to be a witness to someone else's life. And I'm just so proud of him for all of the hard work that he's put in, for how far he's come in building his brand. I'm looking forward to what's ahead for him in 2020 and I will be there dressed up and ready for it. So like two days after our fundraising gala, I was on a getaway in Vegas with my husband Kofi and my sister's fiance uh, asked me if I could plan a surprise wedding for them when they came out. I was already planning to host her baby shower and they were going to come out, but he wanted to surprise her with a wedding. So I coordinated that in about 45 days. Uh, Welcome to your wedding. Uh, Welcome to your wedding. Oh, no. She was so surprised. It was so, so worth it in the end. And then the very next day, we had the baby shower for her, which was also really fun and really cute. The theme was Luna Landing because my niece's name is Luna. Luna was born on October 10th and I became an auntie. Another major event for this year is that we rescued a dog. We named him Scotch. He is so adorable. He's a Shiba Inu mix. I am a first time dog owner, but it's worked out great. Lucky for us, he was potty trained so he can stay. I am really a very dedicated and hands-on mom. I always have been. So we also had a busy year this year, especially since it was Laya's last year of elementary school. And I was the room mom. I was actually calling myself room auntie because I was afraid of the level of commitment, but it ended up being so fun and I was actually really acclaimed for my door decorations. Laya hit double digits this year. She turned 10 and I planned her birthday party in an Egyptian theme. I have been doing her birthday party in the theme of a different country since her very first birthday party. One of my best mom ideas ever was planning my kids birthday parties in the theme of a different country every year because it's helped them to be really curious instead of judgmental and they're super open-minded and we have so much fun every year. The belly dancer was actually running late and I kept threatening to fill in. Laya was horrified. <laughs> And this year was Kofi's last father-daughter dance with Laya and my first mommy-son dance with Lincoln, but Lincoln was running all around. I barely got a dance, worst day ever. Lincoln is actually a super sweet kid, but he's also super tough and athletic and he is great in martial arts. He did a great job in martial arts this year. 
Lincoln also skipped from TK straight to first grade and he did a great job this year. And you know, when we aren't playing soccer, we're playing soccer. So outside of her club team, Laya also tried out for and made the ID64 select team, which is kind of analogous to the ODP team. And we had a fun tournament with that group in Las Vegas this year. One of the saddest things about elementary school being over is actually that I will no longer get to be the dance mom for Laya's little dance group, uh, the Crazy Aids, because woo chow, I used to have so much fun learning these little routines. So Laya actually fractured her wrist this year at dance practice going into a back bend. I'm like, you know, you're made after me. You have my body type and we don't have any business kind of trying to tumble. So, but she made it through just fine. And I was more concerned about how she was going to be able to perform on her violin because she had a routine in the talent show with her brother also. It's funny because God definitely gave me two different personalities in my children. I've got one who's a natural performer. She actually performs great under pressure. And I have the other one who probably would rather not. But, you know, our job is to help our children negotiate their weaknesses. So we're here for both of them. And Laya was one of the few students who was chosen to speak at her fifth grade graduation. My name is Laya Simone Norte, and I'm in fifth grade. In my years at Playa Vista, I have had some very encouraging teachers and students who have inspired me to surpass expectations. I value them greatly. Society might believe that I cannot do certain things because of my gender, age, or race. But at Playa Vista Elementary School, I learned that I can do anything as a person I am. I'm not crying. You're crying. I'm not crying. You're crying. This summer, the kids did a couple of camps, musical theater camp, and Laya did a nature camp, but mostly we enjoy doing Camp Mom. I take them on some different adventures over the summer, and that was fun. I made a big decision to take Laya out of traditional school this year and do a homeschool hybrid program for middle school. I'm really excited about it. I might be an alcoholic by the end of the year, but we're getting through it. She's learning a lot, and we're really bonding. Lincoln also had a really great soccer season this year. He's such a phenomenal little goal scorer and it's a lot of fun watching him give his all with his friends. For his birthday this year, we celebrated in the theme of Italy and of course we had to have an opera singer. We didn't do any international trips this year as a family, but we did several smaller trips, kind of getting it in where we could fit it in. We did our annual trip to Palm Springs with our really close family friends. That's always a great time um, for golfing and spa for mom and dad. We also had a chance to go down to Indian Wells for the BNP Pariba tennis tournament to see um, friends and clients play, which was awesome. And one of my favorite trips of the year was actually going to the Redwood Forest. That was a big adventure for all of us.
because I knew I was going to be hosting a big Christmas dinner this year, I decided to strategically drop the ball and just take the family to Las Vegas for Thanksgiving. And we had a great time with the kids out there. Okay, so it's the final phase of the day, which means we've already gotten up, worked out, had fun, relaxing a little bit. We went to the buffet at Aria for a beautiful Thanksgiving dinner that someone else cleaned up. And then we had dessert with client friends, beautiful property, about 18,000 square feet with city and strip views. That was lovely. Now, Kofi and I are headed out for our annual tradition, which is Black Friday shopping. I'm actually obsessed with Black Friday shopping. This is something he and I have done for about a decade. So we're gonna drop the kids off uh, with my parents in their hotel room, and then he and I will probably be out all night. <laughs> Every year during the holiday season, we see the LA Philharmonic at the Walt Disney Concert Hall. And this year we spent Christmas Eve in Big Bear enjoying the snow as a family before we came back and hosted a huge Christmas dinner for all of our family. We had about 21 people for Christmas dinner. My other favorite thing about the holiday season is our annual holiday card, which is usually something pretty funny. This year, it was a parody on the 2020 presidential election and we were all candidates running for office. So that was a lot of fun too. This year, I tried to pay more attention to my self-care and fitness. I wanted to make sure I was getting in regular exercise and some time for myself. Of course, I love my Zumba class, but I also did other kinds of cardio and a little bit of lifting here or there. And I think it really paid off for me. So my day did already start with me getting the chance to pray and just spend some time in spiritual reflection and um, watch just some YouTube videos. Uh, to kind of start my day off with the attitude of gratitude, just being reflective. Um, and that was before everybody got up. I was able to get those videos started. And now, you know, I'm trying to get some calories back. Um, we've been on vacation for a couple days. We've definitely been eating well and having a good time. Um, but I want to make sure that I keep my cardio up. I'm still trying to, again, recover and get my immune system used to again. We're having a good time, but I think it's important to kind of keep up uh, the physical fitness as part of our regimen. And then even for um, uh, my husband and our daughter, who is an active athlete, we want to make sure that she can get a little bit of calisthenics in since we're not touching soccer ball this week. Twenty nineteen was such an amazing year and I'm so grateful, but I'm already looking ahead to twenty twenty and excited about what's in store. I am so excited that we are nearing the end of the year. What's been an amazing, fantastic year. So many things um, that I've been blessed to participate in and accomplish, including speaking at the Woman Up Conference this year, presenting at Yale and leading my girls' soccer team to an through an undefeated season. I am really really excited about what's ahead for 2020 i was just named a dynamic woman by modern luxury angelino magazine and i'm really really excited to announce that i will be uh, producing an online course in 2020 that you can take to unlock the dynamic woman in you so it will be all about manifesting your potential 
a lot of wisdom and insight for living your best life and pursuing your ambitions and being an unapologetic force for good to be reckoned with. So look out for that. Can't wait to share more.